Hey what's up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Ines Alea from ToleratedCinematics.com and today it's another Filmmaking Friday and today we're going to take a look on how to create a nice close-up zoom effect just like this. For this video we need two different shots, one shot is a wide angle shot so we need a lens that has a wide angle to it and then we need another shot closer to our subject uh, with a close up lens or a 50 millimeter or something like that, it works better that way but just a far distant shot and then a closer shot. We're going to be using these two shots and zoom from one shot to the other uh, with a seamless kind of uh, transition. So without further ado let's go outside, film whatever we need and then uh, you can also go ahead and download my video files with the link in the description so you can go ahead and test it on your own. If you enjoy my videos be sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to make sure that you get notified when I upload new videos. Alright, so we are going to be using Adobe After Effects to achieve this effect. It's actually really simple to create. Uh, so if you're not a hero in Adobe After Effects, don't worry. It's so easy that you can follow this tutorial with these simple steps. So we're going to select our two video clips that we imported. If you want, you can download these with the link in the description and then drag them into a new composition like this. Now we're going to select single composition, uh, sequence, the layers and click OK. And there we go. So now we have our first video and then at the end we have our second video uh, right here. So what we want to do essentially is actually zoom this video in towards a point that it actually blends in seamlessly uh, to transition with this scene right here. Alright so what we will be doing here is actually shift at the end of our first clip we're going to hold shift and press the page up key which will actually jump back 10 frames. Then we're going to select our second layer video clip and then we're going to drag this holding shift to our time scrubber right here and then we're going to just trim our work area. So then we're going to trim our work area so we're going to the last frame press N on the keyboard right click and trim com to work area. So now we have our two video clips overlapping right here and basically what we want to do is just press P on the keyboard and hold shift and press S on the keyboard. This will reveal our position and scale attributes right here. We're going to click on the stopwatch to create a keyframe for each of these effects right here at the beginning of our second clip. Now we're going to basically go to the last frame of our first clip, press T on the keyboard as well and then lower our opacity to 50%. Press U on the keyboard to reveal our previous keyframes again and then we're just going to zoom in until we're actually going to uh, match it with our first video, well actually our second video in this case, um, but just to match it up as good as we can right here. The reason why we're actually using Adobe After Effects is for uh, the motion blur, we're going to be using some motion blur to blend the effect together, um, but as you can see we're kind of blending it pretty well together, I think here will be okay. So now we have uh, this kind of animation and boom we have uh, the next one. So what we'll do is actually uh, press hold shift and press T on the keyboard and set our opacity back to 100. So now we have um, this going on. And now what we can do is select our first keyframes, right click and go to keyframe assistance, easy ease. We can offset them a little bit more in time if we want to. And we can also go to our graph editor right here. Make sure that you're working in the speed graph, so edit speed graph. And then right here we can actually select our first keyframes and make them fade up a little bit. So now we're going to start slowly and then zoom in all the way until we have our other clip. So let's have a little preview. And there we go, so this looks pretty cool. Uh, so I'm going to unselect uh, our graph editor again and now what we want to do is actually toggle the switches until you see this icon right here. We're going to click on it to enable motion blur and still you're not going to see a difference because we also have to enable the motion blur for our composition. So we'll just click on this icon right here and that will enable motion blur. And as you can see if we're going to do the transition we now have this. We can of course make it a little bit faster. So what I will do is actually clip it right over here in our other clip. We can also bring these a little bit closer together so the transition goes a little bit faster. And there we go. Maybe even faster than this. 
Okay, perfect. So now we have a lot of motion blur, which covers the bad quality of our first video and blends it nicely with our second video right here. Now, another thing that we can still do is actually before we blend the two together, we can go to our second layer, go to our effects and presets, window, effects and presets right here, and that should come up right here. And we're going to search for motion tile. We're going to apply our motion tile to our second layer, and then we're going to click on the mirror edge right here. Increase the output width to 125 and the output height to 125 as well. Now we're going to press S on the keyboard and actually click on the stopwatch for our scale right here and actually zoom it out just a little bit like this, maybe a little bit more and change the output width and height to 150. We're going to click on the stopwatch for the scale and then like two frames forward or three keyframes forward, we can actually set this back to right click reset and there we go. So now we're going to have a small animation just like this right here. Also for this one, we're going to select our last keyframe, right click, keyframe assistance, easy ease. Also go into the graph editor and bring this nicely in like so. So now it's going to come to a smooth stop like this. And then also enable the motion blur for this layer and that will blend everything well together. And if we're going to do a preview, it's going to be a little bit more seamlessly. All right, so a nice little trick that we can still do right here is adjust, create a new adjustment layer. And if you want, this is just an extra detail that you can do, is go and install our transition spec, which you can go ahead and get on our website. Then you can apply a few of these effects to it as well. So maybe the TC chromatic aberration, and we're going to set this to overlay or soft light. We're going to press U on the keyboard and just offset it like this. And then right here in the middle, we will have a little bit of glitch effect going on, just like this which is a cool extra. And of course, you can also go ahead and create another adjustment layer and maybe add a TC shake here. So uh, we're going to apply this one. Also offset this right here in the middle. Uh, so we can actually select these keyframes and put them right here uh, on the time scrubber. And then it's going to have a little shake uh, in the zoom. So this is also a pretty cool effect. We can of course bring these keyframes in a little bit so they're going to start a little bit faster. But this way it's like the camera is shaking while zooming into our subject. Pretty cool. And then lastly, maybe one more is um, a build show. We can really stack up these effects. Uh, of course, this is an extra for this tutorial, but I just wanted to show you a little bit more possibilities than just zooming in here. Now it's like the camera is getting some kind of superpower to zoom in and it's it's kind of charging its zoom right here, which is pretty cool. So we'll keep it as it is right here. And now what we'll do is actually export this and import it in Adobe Premiere Pro to do a few final touches. All right, so now we have imported our video clip in Adobe Premiere Pro. And as we can see, uh, it looks pretty cool. The only thing that we need to do is a few tweaks to make it look a little bit better. So right here we have our zoom effect. What we can do to enhance our effect a little bit is add a sound effect, like a whoosh effect, just like this one. I actually found this online, but you can simply find it by Googling for uh, a whoosh kind of sound effect and you'll find it uh, quickly enough. Okay, once you have your whoosh effect, we can also add a little bit more effects. Uh, as you can see right here, our video footage is very stable because we have been filming this on a tripod and this doesn't always sell the effect uh, how we want it to be perceived. So what we can do is actually enhance our video clip a little bit by adding a fake camera shake. So we can go to the presets and we actually have a TC camera shake preset, which you can also get on our website. And I'm going for a medium movement shake and I'm going to apply this to our video clip right here. And as you can see, we have applied a little bit of shake. All we have to do is increase our scale just a little bit and let's see what we have. These screen shakes are actually recorded from real camera movements so that's why they look very organic as you can see right here but now it really looks like you're holding a camera and coming very close to the actress just like this. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give this video a like. Also subscribe to the channel for more and definitely check out our website. We have a bunch to offer for filmmakers. And then apart from that, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.